Hey guys, what's going on? This is Boride, and uh, I'm back again for another video. Uh, this one's gonna be, this one's gonna be about something, something a little different. We are going to be talking about Henry Emily and his pretty much just his timeline. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So, starting in 1983, so him and William decide to start working together, and they make Fredway's Family Diner, right? Uh, and then, you know, stuff happens there. You know, William starts going crazy. His family starts going crazy. While Henry just kind of stands over here and watches. Uh, Henry and William start the FNAF 2 location, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza. And there is where Henry's own child, Charlotte gets killed. Now, we're not talking about Charlotte, maybe that's for another video, but today we're just talking about Henry. But he loses his daughter to one of his creations. And Henry, you know, you'd think the, the right thing to do and the competent thing to do and the smart thing to do would be to just, you know, maybe close and stop? Like... Just stop it with the the Freddy Fazbear's locations, because already you've had six missing kids, two people who have gotten bit by the animatronics, one who actually died. Uh, you've had spring lock failures. You've had scoopings, or whatever you want to call it. Multiple, actually even more than just the six children have been killed from, you know, William and his creations. And you've lost your own family, and your partner's lost his whole family. You'd think you'd stop, but Henry keeps going. 20 years later, he creates FNAF 1, Freddy Fazbear's Pizza, again. And this time, um, it's it, it could also be him and William again. We don't really see much of William in that game, other than we know he's there at some point because he, you know, dismantles the animatronics and gets spring-locked. But Henry here is phone guy, right? Just like in FNAF 2, he leaves a, a series of messages for, uh, for Michael to guide him through. Because Henry, here's the thing. Henry gives some pretty good reasons for why the animatronics would be running around, and maybe that's true for the toys, but for everyone else, the withered animatronics, the originals, like, um, well, just everyone in general, um, they have to do with, you know, revenge, the souls trapped inside of them, and them wanting to kill Michael because he looks like his dad, and yada yada yada. Um, but Henry does give some pretty good advice and reasons for why they'd be attacking. But I'm sure both of them know the real reason. Um, Henry is being attacked for revenge probably because... Um, now, he doesn't get attacked in uh, FNAF 2, which is something to note. But in FNAF 1, he does... And that's probably because the kids are probably thinking, like, why is this guy still going? Why does he keep making locations? People keep dying, keeps closing. There's gas leaks, apparently, and places setting on fire. You'd think that eventually, you know, maybe it's time to stop. And that's why they're attacking him. Because, like, why would you keep going, right? So... Henry does anyway, and it gets him killed, right? All five of them team up and murder him. Uh, and then they stuff him into a Freddy Fazbear suit, just like what he said would happen. So he gets fooled by his own trick, or I guess, I guess not really, but he gets fooled. He, he dies the way that he said to Michael that Michael would die if he ever were to get caught. So he... He doesn't even follow his own advice, really. But, you know, it, it, he, get, he gets killed, and we actually get to see him in the suit in the FNAF Plus trailer that I talked about last time. If you haven't seen it, go watch that video. Um, but 
Anyway, you'd think this would be the, the end for Henry, right? And we also know that Henry records his tapes for Michael for the FNAF 1 uh, just a few weeks before Michael starts working there from FNAF Plus, right? They tell us how this kid who's been there, um, you know, got killed a week after they started putting out, like, job applications and everyone was mad. And obviously Michael took one of those and started working there a couple weeks after. And uh, the date in one of those videos is the same year, and it's October something, uh, and Michael's pink slip or whatever, his his um, uh, thing, whatever it's called, uh, has the same year and November or something. So it's about a month after, maybe three weeks, something like that. And... We know that this kid gets killed the same night Henry does because one, there's no security guard there, and two, someone's in the suit, and three, it's coincidentally the night after that happens is when Golden Freddy gives the message, and we know that if you have watched my theory about Golden Freddy and FNAF Plus, you'd know that <clears throat> this kid goes on to possess Golden Freddy, and that's why the next phone call is from Golden Freddy and not Henry. So, anyway... They've stuffed him into a suit. You'd think that'd be the end for Henry, right? But no, because we see him again in FNAF 6. So what happens? How is Henry able to be in FNAF 6 if he's dead already? Well, this this is one I came up with, and it's it's a bit of a long shot. It's a weird one. But I think that maybe Golden Freddy, just like he did to William, put my, um, Michael, put Henry into his own personal prison, or prison, well, yeah, I guess prison, but his own personal hell, just like they did to William, and his hell is none other than FNAF, I hate saying it, but FNAF World. Now, this, not exactly FNAF World, right? Like, obviously, Henry isn't going around collecting the people from the past and putting them together to fight weird wood chopper guys and swirly plant things and big octopus but instead like he's been put there with all of his creations and he's just there to spend the rest of his days as a red crocodile thing who's just fishing at a pond but after that when the souls in FNAF 3 get, get set free by uh, the arcade cabinets. They realize that William, he's not gone. William's still here. He's still running around after they rescued him and everyone else from the FNAF 1 location, brought him to Fazbear Frights. Golden Freddy sees, and we know this because Shadow Freddy is in the game, so at least Shadow Freddy sees that Springtrap is still running around. William is still good after they thought they'd killed him. But he's not dead yet, because, you know, Remnant made him immortal and this and that and whatnot, and FNAF lore's weird and all that kind of stuff. So, Golden Freddy, after seeing that William is not dead yet, resurrected Henry from his hell, and they teamed up together to put an end to everyone. They're, they're bringing everyone back. They're going to end everything, save everyone, and kill William, finally. So him and Golden Freddy decide to put Hen uh, to put William in his own personal prison, similar to Henry's, how it has everyone from the past, but not exactly. Instead, William has to literally be killed millions of times over and over, and Henry is back at his pod where he once was, and who is also tormenting William in this new hell. And you'd think that's a pretty nice end, but it's not it, because William comes back again as Glitch Trap. And if you've seen Matt Pat's theories, you know that Cassidy, or Golden Freddy, is the Princess Quest minigames. And in Princess Quest 2, there is this red man who is old, who assists... Cassidy into, like, ultimately defeating Glitchtrap, I guess. And this, 
this is Henry. And I think it's kind of obvious, right? He's red. He's in a game. And he's old, right? He's old man consequences and he's red, right? So, you know, it, it ties into his persona from the other uh, times we've seen him. And so he gives Cassidy this sword to finally put an end to William. And in this particular ending, Cassidy's able to do that and saves Vanessa from uh, William. And Vanessa's able to live her life as Vanessa and not Vanny. Um, but that isn't even the canon ending, so that doesn't even happen. But... Old, so Henry is, Henry's dead, but he's still, I don't know, like, what would you call that? He's just, he's in a game, right? He's, he's in William's situation, but he's in an arcade game instead of a VR game, so it's not as cool. And he's just a side character in that game, too. <clears throat> but, anyway, so... Recap, Henry, he starts making stuff with William. People get killed, his daughter gets killed. He decides to leave messages for Michael. Then he ends up getting killed himself. He gets put into hell. Golden Freddy realizes Henry st or William's still alive, so resurrects Henry. They team up, put William in hell. They both go down to their areas of that hell. William comes back. Golden Freddy... And Old Man Consequences, or Henry, come back too. He uh, Henry assists Golden Freddy into killing William again. Exactly what they did in FNAF 6. And that's pretty much it, right? Like, we haven't seen anything else of Henry whatsoever. And so that is what I think Henry's true story is. Is that he, uh, he was put... The biggest thing... Uh, is that he was put in FNAF World. And I think the biggest thing there is that the um, the thing about him killing himself, I don't think that's meant to be taken literally. I think it's more of a metaphor for how in FNAF 1, his creations killed him. So technically, hadn't he created those, he wouldn't have died. So he technically did kill himself. But he didn't shoot himself or whatever whatever it was in FNAF World. It's just a metaphor that he got himself killed by his own creations. And that right there is Henry's story. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Um, I, uh, I don't know. I, it's, it's weird. I think it fits kind of nicely, though. Not really, but, you know, whatever. I haven't even talked about the books, but... They're not necessarily canon, so they don't really matter all that much. I mean, according to Fazbear Frights, everything Henry has ever made has been infused with agony. Apparently, and this includes things like Mini Rena's, right? And Bitty Babs, Balloon Boy, and things like the puppet, the toys, the fun times, like L Chip, uh, Music Man. Like, all these different animatronics have been infused with agony, and maybe that's why souls are able to, like, um, possess animatronics. And that, maybe that's why nightmares and phantoms are able to exist in shadows, because agony has been infused into them, so they, they can kind of do all kinds of weird things, because they have agony. But that's my theory on, on uh, Henry. Um... Next time, we'll be looking into some different things. Um, and I hope you guys enjoyed. Again, you have anything to say? Leave it in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Any rebuttals, agreances, anything I missed, anything you gathered, anything, leave it in the comments. So, hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys liked me playing FNAF AR in the background. A very weird game, by the way. Um... And if you know how to play that game and you're yelling at me when I died to Toy Freddy, I, d I had no idea what I was doing because I don't really play that game. So you can't blame me. I don't know how to play that game. But anyway, that's all for today. I'll see you guys next time. 
See ya.